I will present to you diagonal bio and the diagnostic uh, instrument. I need this one. Uh, I start with a, a quote from Nature in March 2020, so you know roughly where we are. So every single time we have an outbreak, we're one step behind in that we don't have a rapid diagnostic to detect that new organism. And Diagonal Bio can actually offer this market the fastest, rapid and most accurate instrument in analyzing this one. And who am I uh, to claim that? I am the CEO of Diagonal Bio since a couple of months ago. And uh, I have 25 years of management teams or leadership teams, where of 18 as CEO in uh, life science companies. I've also founded a company called Equal Pharma, which is on Spotlight Next. Uh, so I have some experience with me, at least. Existing solutions you all came across, I'm sure. The PCR instrument and the PCR test. We needed to take samples. It was sent to central labs. They analyze it. You get the answer back in best case, 24 hours, but normally at least 48 hours. That's too slow. What happens with the spreading of the infection during this time? It needs a laboratory trained personnel staff. Uh, you need to send it logistics. It's quite an expensive instrument. So the existing tools is uh, the PCR, but it's also very accurate. You shouldn't forget that. It's accurate. We can trust it. The other alternative we had during um, the pandemic was the self-test. It's cheap, you don't need to be laboratory trained, but can you actually trust the result? Lots of discussions in conferences, in meeting rooms, what result did you get? Can we trust that? Are you contagious or not? So these are the two um, outliers here, I would say, in the spectra. They're also gene specific, so the, the self-test is only of targeting one marker. There are multiplex in the PCR, but it's still very expensive, and mostly in central labs, it's just one genetic marker. So in 2020, three guys here in Lund said this, there must be another solution to this. We must be able to be accurate and fast. So Diagonal Bio was founded in 2020, and we now have two product lines. We call it Lamplify for the less regulated markets, and we call it panviral for the regulated markets. So that's for the human diagnostics. It is fast, it is accurate, it's cheap, you don't have to be laboratory trained, and it's a point of contact. We don't need to have to send any samples anywhere. We can directly, after 10 minutes, tell yes, you have, or no, you haven't. We have eight channels in our, um, in our instrument, we can have multiple genetic markets, markers, or we can have multiple patients for one marker. So what is, how can I claim that this is accurate and what is the biggest differences? The PCR is, as I said, central labs. We send them there. They need to purify the sample before even starting analyzing it. Uh, they need to add fluorescence, which can be toxic and cancerogenic. They need to cycle the heating a couple of times before they're ready to do the anal analyze. And that takes approximately three and a half hours. We don't need to purify. We take the sample, we license it, and then we can read the result and run the machine. We add enzymes and primers, as they do with, with um, the PCR, but we don't use any toxic or cancerogenic. We has an, have an isothermic uh, heating, which means in a couple of minutes we have reached 65, 67 degrees, and that's it. And in 10 minutes we have the um, result, and the exactness here of this instrument is depending on the electrochemical detection. So we are actually reading the electrons that's moving and the footprint of those electrons tells us if this is positive or negative result. So we combined a lamp technology with electrochemical detection and that's the clue to being accurate and fast. 
So, uh, can I claim this? Yes, I can. Uh, DTU has made, um, at the, the Danish Technical University has made external validation on this in their lab. We have been compared to PCR with a number of samples, and we can conclude that we have a 98% correlation to PCR. And as the former speaker said, there is no exact, there's no 100%. So 98 is quite well, compared to the PCR. And best time, 8 minutes, 47 seconds. I can do with 10 minutes as well. The other trials we've done, a couple of them, but we've done with the, the University Hospital here in Skåne, and that was on multiple genetic markers. And to see that, yes, we can actually combine different genetic markers and we can get the positive or negative results from that as well in the same time frame. So it's not only the result that's been uh, quite fast from the instrument, it's also the company development as such. It was founded in 2020 with a blank paper. We had um, the, the idea they had was to combine this lamp and the electrochemical detection there was a um, listing of the company in 2021 at Nasdaq First North. There was a patent granted in the EPU, uh, EPO at 2022. In 2023, we got the CE marking of Lamplify, which means that we actually can address a market already. And that means that our patents are uh, extended all the way to uh, 2041 to cover this combination of technologies. We've also patented and design protected the channels that we use in the machine. So that is a consumable for the user and it must be our uh, channels that they cartridge that they use. So the markets that we can address with the Lamplify is the one you see with agriculture, food and water, animal diagnostics, and also research use only. Human diagnostics is for the panviral, and that will take some time because that's another process to go through with that. But everything we gain now in results with the Lamplify can be put back in the panviral as well. All data we get in is good data. Uh, we have then chosen to focus on animal diagnostics. We're a small company, a small organization, we can't be all over the place. So we got some traction from not the cow and not the cat, not to start with. We have questions from them, but we actually started to build the genetic portfolio around uh, um, respiratory viruses in horses. That's a niche market, it's a premium market, but we're also working on a volume market in parallel with this. But the traction came from the horses. And there are three viruses, they vaccinate for that. There's one that the vaccination doesn't work, and that one is the worst one, because if the horses gets that one, they often need to be put down. There was an outbreak at a big race in Valencia. They had a spread. They sent away the samples as they should. They got the, the result 48 hours later. The competition was over. The horse owners went home and 10 horses were infected and had to be put down. These horses cost at least 5 million euros. So there are a lot of value to be saved by actually doing a quick sample, 10 minutes, isolate that horse or the two, uh, in order not to have this spreading of this one. As you, as you saw on the, on the previous slide, our test is $15 per test, and our competitors is around $90 per test. So if you have a horse worth 5 million euros or dollars, I would say that $15 is quite a good insurance. So milestones for 2024, we will have pilot installations. We have three at the moment. And the most prestigious one, I think, is uh, with Lisa Lidbeck in Lödrup. And she is a veterinarian in the International Ride Sports Association. So she is at several competitions uh, worldwide. 
so we will continue with introducing Lamplify to the market and also in other segments. We will also um, create value by building our uh, genetic portfolio. And then we have to hold back, unfortunately, the pan viral for a bit with the human diagnostics. We will do a strategy for it, but we will not be able to implement it due to, re to the resources that we have, quite limited. So it's a team of four, and I'm one of them. So there are three more. So we can't be all over the place. We have a board, experienced board. We have Justin Jacobs on with uh, experience from HemoQ, Tecota Foss, but also former CEO at Medicom Village. We have Kush. Uh, Kush is one of the three founders. Uh, so he's still, he's still in the board. He is in the board. And Edward, he is the CEO of BioExtrax. And I think that was 54 seconds over time. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the presentation, Karin. Very interesting. Um, there's a couple of questions here about how you're able to keep costs so low. Uh, I showed that on the last slide, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but especially considering you're using primers. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but it's actually... Um, it's, a, it's possible to keep them low, the reaction mixes, uh, to keep them low. We always start with synthetic genetic material. We try out that with our primers and design those. Uh, and then we also have a qPCR that we test so we know that we're in the right range. And I think the team behind me, with the experience they have, and a couple of tools that we built in-house, uh, keeps the costs down quite well. Um, have you already gotten IVDR approval? Nope. Okay. And that's, that's the human diagnostic side. Yeah. 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 And that's a longer route uh, and that will, will uh, require more resources. Yeah. Uh, so uh, going back to Lamplify, why horses? Um, yeah, someone is asking. Yeah, we got the first interest from, from um, Hersholm in Denmark for testing that and that was also due to he's also working a lot with competition horses race horses and sports horses and found it intriguing that no one actually had taken this niche of accurate and fast detection mm -hmm. because of uh, competitions horses from everywhere uh, extremely valuable and no one trusts uh, the quick tests, mm -hmm. and they send it away. And this is the story that I told you. And I think that suddenly they had been scouting for different analytical tools. They haven't found anything, read about this one, and wanted to give it a go. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your mar marketing strategy for Lamplify? I think to start with, with uh, we have to find good pilots with uh, KOLs and people that actually uh, can bring it internationally, talk about it, mm. and mouth to mouth to start with. And that's again to keep the costs down. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm, could you please tell us about your capital need for the coming two years? Yeah, um, it's, uh, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> we did a fundraising now this uh, spring, and we had 56% uh, in guarantee of a 30 million approximately and got not more than that for the subscription. So it was a very expensive uh, fundraising. We're working now on getting the traction from the market with the resources we have. And then we, as many others, would like to have the right investors with the long-term uh, knowledge and also the long-term investor interest mm -hmm. to follow the company that we will need to, to raise more money. Mm -hmm. And one last question, where are you in terms of preparing pan viral for the market? Uh, as I said, we are, we are at the moment looking at a regulatory strategy for pan viral to see where the gaps are between the ISO um, certification and what's required. It uh, doesn't necessarily have to be IVDR, then you immediately think about Europe and then the, you have the FDA. There could be other routes. We are just trying to map where are we, where could we go, 
and what does our resource allow us to do? Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you so much uh, for thank answering you. the questions. Thank for you. The presentation. Thank you.